Hello, and welcome to our show, Lead Me Home. I am Mary Beth Maestre. How many near-death experiences does it take for one to get God's, God's attention, for God to get your attention? One, two, three, four times? And I'm talking both about physical death not even mentioning spiritual death, because so many of us live in a spiritual death that we're not even aware of, through loneliness, depression, thoughts of suicide. At this point, I am talking about a physical death. My next guest will share his story with you. And as let's see how patient God has been with him as he slowly brought him back and got his attention finally through several near-death experiences. So let me now introduce you to my next guest, Mr. Dennis Pollard. Dennis, welcome to our show. And it's been an interesting time I've had with you, learning all about your story. Well, thanks for having me, Mr. Herbert. Um, uh, my name is Dennis Pollard. Uh, I was born here in Belize City uh, in 1954. I was baptized at St. Ignatius Church and I went there for one year or so until I came up to a hurricane where I was devastating Belize. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very serious hurricane. I was a boy, I was six years old. I was living um, in the Yabra era, and my grandma was living in, um, in the Sand Creek Valley area. Mm -hmm. So one day we were out there, and she decided to bring me back to Belize at the time. Because was, of the hurricane? It's because of the hurricane. Okay. I don't know how she knew the weather, but oh. we had radio, but it's only until 10 o'clock at night to hear the radio. But I'm sure that people were talking about it. You know, yes, you were yes, only somehow, six. I huh? didn't know nothing. But, so uh -huh, nothing yet. She made sure that she brought me from the valley and bring me back to Belize City. Mm -hmm. We had a house up there in um, Yabra, right behind the vault. Mm -hmm. That's where we had a house. Okay. And she decided that the house was not good enough for us to stay with the weather. So we took it up to up the cemetery in Yabra era in um, front of Wesley College. And the rain was so hard that the rain was still in my face. And she opened the umbrella, but we could not hold it open because the windows closed it back up. So she threw the umbrella away, and we finally reached up to like half an hour going up the, the breeze. We got to the house, and uh, they gave me a, a cup of milk with jam, bread and jam. And they put me to sleep, covered me up. And but let's. This house is going to be a house on foreshore. Yes, in foreshore area. Yes, and that's uh, the water right in front of foreshore as well. Yes, huh? uh, right there mm -hmm. at the water side. So my auntie had lived out there, Miss Ursula Moody. Okay. So we went there and they feed me and everything and put me to bed. And I guess about one o'clock in the morning, or yeah. two or sometime, that's was when it was came I in. Yeah. no time or anything. And the weather was pounding the house, shaking the house from side to side, thunder, lightning, every time the lightning strikes, you think it's daylight because mm -hmm. it, it was so bright. And I had to get up and I peeped through the window and I saw the water coming up gradually, like shh, all the way up, mm -hmm. up to reach the bottom of the house and shove the house up, the, the stilts, off its, uh -huh. up to the post. And then the house started to float and, you know, it started to move around, so I had to, we had a man there, Mr. Polo. Um, I don't really remember his title, but he was there with us as mm -hmm. a protection. Mm -hmm. I guess God sent him there. God, yeah, God's hand there. So the house was getting up, filling up with water, and the water came up under my bed. I started floating the mattress up the bed. My grandma stood beside me all the and time. And you were on the mattress? I was on the mattress. mattress. Uh -huh. And... Uh, it was coming up and it was coming real fast up and then the house was shaking and then all of a sudden we feel everything, the, the roof start falling off, the zinc start flying off. The mattress was going all the way up to the ceiling. My grandma was standing on something but she was there to hold me all the way. 
just holding on to the mattress. And somehow we reached the ceiling where Mr. Polo and my auntie and him, they break through the ceiling. There was those wooden ceiling um, uh -huh. roof. Mm -hmm. Before you reach the ceiling. Yes. They break through and got to the little attic window where they hold on to the other house and they got the people through there, my auntie and them through them. So they got out? They got out. out to them. the other house? Yes, Mr. Polo was still there holding on to the house. Mm -hmm. And me and my grandma left in the house. I was the last two. So uh, the mattress starts sinking and I cried out. And she said, oh, okay, I will, I'll let you go. Because she was holding on she to it. She was holding on to the mattress yes. and the mattress was going down with me and yes. her. Uh -huh. And she decided that she would let go. Oh my. She decided that she was going to let go and save me. So she let go and figured she was going to stand or something and then she went down. Mr. Polo took me, put me up through the attic window into the other house. So he reached down and grabbed you out. Yes, he uh -huh. grabbed me out and then he put me into the other house. And I stood at the attic window, hollering for my grandma, Ba, I called her Ba, Ba, Ba. I said, oh, yeah. And I called for her another time, and she said, ah, I'm coming. But after I called for her again, she never, never, never answered. Answer. So I guess she went down. They got me into the other house, and as soon as I get into the other house, the house break up like, like uh, like when you throw my stick in the water, yes. all the, the, the boards scattered all over the place. Okay. I went down, I was sitting there at the window, they moved me because they didn't want me to see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was crying and everybody was crying and I felt bad. But after the hurricane, it was a long time. When we got into the house, we just all settled down in there where I was still thinking about her. Mm -hmm. And when the weather went down, I looked. All the police were devastated. Everywhere oh, yes. was, oh, was wood yeah. everywhere and everything. So they moved us up to Hattieville after that. Okay, let, let, let's stop there a minute. So let, let, let's rehash that a little bit. Yes. So your mother, your grandmother, gave mm. up her life yes, for you. For my life. So this will be, viewers, I spoke about near death. This is his first, first example of yes. God. Sparing my your life, life. Yes. and at the expense of your grandmother. grandmother yeah. So she was willing to give up her, her life, life for my for, for, for your life. Yes. So what what I mean, and I know lots of people can relate to sixty one. I know I certainly can. No, and a lot of people have these sort of stories. But here is one proof, uh, yes. right here of one that so, so many died. Yes. We did have a lot of deaths, but an example of one that survived with the heroism of other people, yes. not only your, your grandmother who lost her life, but um, Mr. Polo, this Polo who yeah. was able to get the rest of the family out, holding on to the other house to get to pull you up. He could have just left you two alone, you, yes. you and your grandmother, and you'd have been gone. Yes. But he was, came back to get all, like getting everybody across, and you as well. But let's go back. Um, your, your parents, who was your mother and who was your father? Oh, okay. I didn't say that. Um, That's okay. My mother, her name was Helen Alamia. Uh huh. And she was born in Dangriga. Okay. By, um, I don't really remember my grandparents because I didn't know nothing about them. Mm -hmm. My father, he was born here in Belize City. His name is Hugh Pollard. Mm -hmm. From the same grandmother that went down for me. Uh, his, his, okay. his mother, yes. yes. Sure, yes. his mother. And, um, and you had a brother? I had a, a brother up to me and a sister. God, they took us like twins because we were just like in months. Yes. Uh, was, uh -huh. it was, it's not an heir, but in months, I, he came right up to me. <laughs> right, so okay. it was like nine, ten months but after. Later that he was then my sister came and then he left because he found another woman and then so you my mom. So yeah, didn't really know your father at all? Not then and then. Not at that time? Not that time, uh -huh. no. But so, you, are you all going to be um, baptized? Did you, you're, yes, we got baptized there at St. Ignatius Church. Okay. Too. So you are, the mother has baptized you all, all three of you, yes, right into there. the Catholic yes, faith. Yes, yes. Okay. And then I know I was a Catholic. Mm -hmm. So then after that, somehow you were being raised by this grandmother. Yes, Is I that was. It? Because yeah. they loved me, but I don't know where, but then. So my, so my pretty hair. Well, it must have been that, your charm. <laughs> <laughs> you were such a cute baby. Yeah. So grandmother was raising you. So really, she was your mother up to that point, huh? Yes, that, she was. That, yes, you, yes. that you did lose yes, her. Okay. 
So viewers, um, yes, listen to it. So there we go. From the very beginning of his life, we see God spared him. Yes. God had a plan for you, you know. And Amen. We, we I know, know it. that it's going to come. It's definitely. Okay, let's, let's move on now. So you, you're going to go back to your mother again to my now? my mother. Went mm -hmm. back to my mother. And? Uh -huh. She stayed at the house there with Mr. Lindy Rogers. Okay. They had lived in Tiger Street. And their house went down too, where the post came up through the middle of the house. Oh. And then we had to find somewhere else to go. So they were building a patio bill, the British yes. soldiers, they built a patio bill with some lamb barracks. So we got like, um, almost the end of the building, we got one, one apartment with all of us. So I had to sleep on the floor. Mm -hmm. As a, a mother time. and, it, and the tr you have three kids. Okay. No, only the two because the other, daughter, um, my other sister, she stayed with a lady, Miss Sarah, and uh, Mr. Eric Price, okay. Judge Price's brother. Okay, so they helped to raise her. They helped to raise her all the way till she got okay. older. No? So you're going to go to school there in Hattieville? Yes, I went to the Catholic school there in Hattieville, um, St. Jude's School. Okay. Where I started there in Infant One. I went up from there up to Standard Five. I, I, skipped, from Standard, I skipped Standard Five to, from four to six. And I took my exam to go to high school then from there. We didn't have money to go to St. John's College or Wesley College or wherever. So junior secondary school was just building and then I was the first student where there was 144 of us in first form. I was the first okay. one. So first year we had, we had the, only one form, form uh -huh. one. Okay. Then the other year they took on another Kept hundred and that. Then so I went into second farm. Uh -huh. Then we had first farm and second farm. Okay. The other year after that we had third farm. Third so farm. I went to third farm. Then we had second farm and third farm. Mm -hmm. But they only went up to third farm that time. At that point. Then okay. from there we could go to SDSU or anywhere else we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. That was just a secondary on um, where you go from there to brief you up to go to. Uh, to f for a little further. Yes. Okay, but let's go back. Go back to um, Hattieville. You were going to church there. Oh yes, uh, we had the Mennonite church there. Where those. But, but but before the Mennonite church, you had we had a we priest. We had we priest. had a Catholic um, priest used to come there, Father Sati. Sati. Uh huh. He and came to do mass on Sundays, mm -hmm. so we had mass in the classroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we had an altar there, mm -hmm. and he came to do mass and everything. So right there, I got um, confirmed. Mm -hmm. Was used. So you um, received Holy Communion, confession. First Holy Communion. Uh, like confirmation. That. Because at the time we used to teach religion. Sure. Now they don't teach it. So, some, we some had, so we had religion uh, class, mass, um, it was in, yes. at, um, arithmetic, English, reading. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we had spelling, yeah. spelling classes, so we had to go through all this. So, so you received all of that. So that was on Sunday, but yes. during the week, during the week, Wednesday, what I week? had to go to the Mennonite church where they invite us every, every day. We had classes on Mondays where we do craft class. And Mondays, uh -huh. I used to go to Monday and Wednesdays. Uh -huh. Then you have Tuesdays and Thursdays where a different group goes. Okay. So we, have, we learned, first of all, we did Bible classes first before we do any uh -huh. artwork or whatever. And we used to get our verses and we read them. We do a like book. So 20 minutes of Bible classes, mm -hmm. then we go to our um, artwork or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can remember one one we had where we had to build, put on the whole armor of God. Okay. It was just a frame with, with God, with the soldier there. So we had, had no helmet, had no armor, had no shield or whatever. Mm -hmm. And every, every week we go, we add one on, mm -hmm. the, the breastplate and the skirt. Yes. Then the, the shoe, then the helmet, then the sword. I'll come back to that because I brought one with me, a picture of it. Yes. So we'll come back to that. So what was nice is, <laughs> in a sense, so you, Sundays you're getting Mass and you're getting the Catholic, the homilies, and, and you're getting the readings of the, of course, as a little boy, you're not paying yes. much attention. But then on Wednesdays you're getting Bible studies. And and teach all me the, about God more. Uh, Teaching, they're, they're teaching you art craft that you like, and I think on, sometimes at Christmas you said they'd give gifts again. Yes, so All, any you. which kid wouldn't want gifts at, at that point. That time we call it a bundle. Uh -huh, a bundle. They give you a towel, a big bar towel, mm -hmm. and when you have a pants in there, a shirt, a soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, a, whole a, toy, uh, a toy, a wash rag. Oh, I love it. Uh -huh. And 
Sometimes you get a little testament. I still have a testament. Okay. But also, we, we, we're wrapping up now. But also at that point, your mother is going to take on a new mate, a, a, yes, a yeah. companion. So yeah. you're going to get yourself a stepfather. Yes, I had a stepfather that uh, came to live with us. Mm -hmm. So we got an extra room, an extra apartment. So it was from one door to the other. Okay, so it's like two different. So we uh -huh. had our own room after that. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> and you said you got along with your stepfather. Yes, because he was uh, he was young and humble at that time. It was like we didn't have bars and things like that at that time. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of years, then he started having bar in a village and. Uh, and they started the drinking. downfall of many a manner, yourself yes. included. Um, and of course, he's, he, like you said, he takes you hunting and fishing. Yeah, I used to like fishing, I used to like hunting. I, and we go in the evening, we spend the whole night there in the bush. I mean, it's very dark, it's uh -huh. scary, but then. Uh, yeah, but you had some, him as the older yeah, man. Somehow sure. I, I had a good spirit with me at all times. So. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you said you'd um, bundle up uh, firewood uh, and sell it? Oh, yes, in my spare time, I used to go, I cut the um, oak wood. Mm -hmm. And I had my axe, so I burst up the wood like in five pieces in a bundle and sell it for a shilling. Five cents a bundle. Uh -huh. Depends on how much. How many put together? How people used to have fire, um, fire heart. Back out there at, at, at the hat of it. Back. Big uh -huh. And this is all after the hurricane. So, so it that, believes yes. took a while to get back on its feet. So lots yes. of people had to use So the that's where I really went up in Hattieville. Most of my childhood days were there. I used to like to go hunt with sled shot. Sure. And it was... You were still so free and everything was so was innocent saying, yes. at that time. Okay, let's stop there. Viewers will stop there and we'll continue on his story. And we'll continue to see how God's plan mm. for Dennis. It's not, he's not going to leave him there. He's going to be following him. Dennis doesn't realize it, but he's following him all along. Okay. We'll be right back. Uh, started drinking beer on Saturday nights, uh, sleeping in on Sunday mornings, missing mass, and then it just became a pattern and continued. Without God, I don't know where I'd be right now. I feel like I'm whole again. I know the importance of the Eucharist. I know the importance of the sacraments that I didn't know at a young age. I follow God's will because my desire is to get to heaven. Our, our lives are rich and full by being members of the church. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, visit catholicscomehome.org. Hello and welcome back. And let's continue on Dennis's story now. So Dennis has been living in Hattieville with his mother, his younger brother, and now a stepfather has come into the picture and a few more, another brother and, mm -hmm. and, a, sister. and a sister. And then three sisters. So three sisters. So you have half brothers, sisters there. Yes. So both parents are going to work. Yes, they so were working. You help to raise the kids. Yeah, well, I had so to, to be there for them to sure. watch, bathe them every day, watch them. feed them every day, and take them for a walk, put them to sleep and stuff like that. <laughs> but so. you're going to move to Belize now. So you've yes. moved to Belize. That's mm. when you go to junior secondary. Yes, so they didn't, it wasn't la didn't last too long when I came back to Belize because everything changed. Changes again. Okay. You know. But so you, then after junior secondary, you have to go out and help the family. So you're going to get a few jobs. I get a what bit. was your first job? My first job was I went to Mr. Joel Gable in Erie Street. Erie Street, sure. Where they had a, a grocery shop there. Mm -hmm. When um, I used to ride a carry bike and take groceries to Mrs. Bradley and other people. Deliver Bradley groceries, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the the um, Goffs and all them, mm -hmm. Searle, and I, so I get to know all those people. Oh, sure. And, so, and, and you were trustworthy, the people yes. there trusted you. Um, you're also, from, you move from that and you're going to go yeah, to Navarrete, you the, said? The money was small. It mm -hmm. was like, he gave me nine fifty a week and said, um, after six months, he can raise my pay. Uh -huh. So after six months, I got 50 cents more. <laughs> so you got $10. Yes, and after that, I asked him when I get the next raise, because it's still kind of small for me, right? Uh -huh. So he said, okay, I'll give her another 50 cents more. He gave up to like ten fifty. Mm -hmm. Then I was hanging around Navarrete because I... After work, I go stand oh, around, around the, and watch them pump gas. The gas station's right around that, right there, down right the street. Right at the corner, uh -huh, yes. At the um, corner. Like Mr. Prince and him used to uh -huh. live right there. Uh -huh. So I got the first job there, cleaning vehicles, um, fixing tires, uh -huh. washing the bottom of cars, you know, sure. pressure wash and stuff. 
Then BC came in where they got all those brand new vehicles and yes. came with, with grease all over them, so I had to wash them up with gasoline yes. uh -huh. and wash them with soap and polish them and send them to the show window. Okay. And that was like $35. A big increase. Yes. Oh, sure. Uh -huh. For a week, so I had to do all those, you know, make 10 cars for the week and I get $35. It was a lot of work, but then I was you getting more, right? You were getting money to, to take home to the house as well, Yes, huh? and then my mom used to get her chair, and then I get mine. Mine was to so we'll go to movies. <laughs> that like, was your treat. I think that was everybody's treat back then. Martini. I know every Sunday we were allowed to go to matinee, sure. Yeah. But then again, once again, you're going to move on, and you're going to go to, a, as a stevedore, is it I you went said? to, so the customs, there was there, where the tourist village is right now. No, uh -huh. And I started working for, by ship. Like if you go six in the morning, you work till six in the evening. Mm -hmm. Then time you get more like a hundred and something dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Then I got to this company, the Christian Council, Christian Union. Okay, yes. And they do it by, um, you say like you do it for finish the ship for the you work from from the ship come until it's finished. It's like like three days sometimes, night and day after work. Oh. You make up to three four hundred dollars a week. That was a lot of money for me. So I had, that's where the fun time come in. Okay, you start now. Money started. is coming in. And whereas before, even though you, you said you were not going to church, but, but your mother had raised you with a good, um, a good upbringing, like, 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 like most now. everyone that you were honest yes. and, and trustworthy. Yeah? No I one was, could ever say anything bad about no, you that you'd stolen nobody, or any of that sort nobody of thing. Nobody can't find anything on me like that. So, Up till now. The, and then I think you, you also mentioned to me, even though you're getting to be in your 20s now, 21, yes. your mother still had a rule. You had to be home in the house. Nine o'clock. By nine o'clock. You hear that? Man, <laughs> big man in the house. Had to be home by nine o'clock. Those That's were right. good, rules, good yeah. discipline, good yes, rules. Yes, I learned it. Yeah. But it's not going to last, of course. Money's coming in. And what's going to happen now? You start. I, I moved from there. I went to sewing factory where. Uh -huh. Like 500 women around me, so I started Oh my having goodness, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. What did we do that for? <laughs> I had a lot of women that time. So my first daughter came because I met a girl, Glenda Rancharam. Mm -hmm. That's the mother of my your daughter. daughter. What's your daughter's name? Teresa. Teresa. Teresa Nicole. I gave her the name. Mm -hmm. okay, because her mom made me jealous and she, well, I had to move on. Uh -huh. It was meant to be, but it happened away, right? Sure. And then, she decided that she's going to go to the United States. So she left and I told her, if you want to go, you're going to leave my daughter. And she was like three months old. So I had to take care of her. She slept with me. You brought her into your mother's house. Yes. So your mother, you and your mother helped. I had to sleep with me. Helped her I took raise care of her, bathed her. I cleaned mm -hmm. the diapers, I washed it out you. and washed it out. And you then, became the mother and the father. Yes. Like, uh-huh. Yes. So um, you... Mm -hmm. Her mom never came up until she like about 27 years old and she said, oh, my big daughter, you know, and then my dad looked at her and said, you're not my mother. Of course not. It's not my father, it's my mother, my, my father. My father's both, mother yes, and yeah. father. Right? So she let her know that, you know, mm -hmm. I am the one who took her all the time, took care of her. all the way through high school and everything, because I had to pay the... I pay all, everything. Everything, because <laughs> everything she to always raise come her. to whenever she needs something, she, she come to me. But she's not going to be the only child in your life, no, is she? No, then another boy came after. I guess I was just running around too much and made mistakes in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we love it when we say made mistakes. You didn't make a mistake. No, you no, did, I but God, <laughs> when that act takes place, <laughs> anything can but, happen. Um, God's, God's but gift. the girl didn't waste time with me. She moved on and she got a guy named Walter was from okay. Ditz. Mm -hmm. She married him. Okay. And so um, they raised they the boy. They took him over and adopted him. Okay, and then there's an, another Then another one, one came. And I tried to live with her, but I couldn't because I had my own ways and they had their own ways too. So, she, so, so um, hmm? my, my son was growing up until eight years old when the lady left to go to the United States. Everybody was into the United States. Mm -hmm. Back then, sure. Then, um, so he went. Your son went as well. They took him with all even him. I know. Mm. At the time I started working with Tolo. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went to the but, council. But but just before we go there now, you're, you're, you're making more money. So yes. now you're you're a man mm -hmm. of the world now. I'm huh? wild. I was wild. wild. You're wild. partying, you're drinking, 
you're into smoking, smoking marijuana, marijuana women, um, women. I don't know how big porn was, but once the minute porn comes in, you get... No, I never watched those. I not into, did, not in, nothing like that, that no, as no, serious no. as that. Way. Okay. You didn't need to. You had 500 women working at the, <laughs> at the, at the factory. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. You watch, you watch lovely women every day. Every day. You know? Okay, Those go ahead. Those women, it wasn't like no. Yeah, yes, they were times different. completely different. Okay, now you're working with Tala. Mm -hmm. Yes, I used to go to the United States story. like every two weeks. Sometimes mm -hmm. every week I used to go bring cars to the United States. Mm -hmm. And I, I was learning the trade because I would pass this place today, and then the next time I pass this night, so I was learning the road uh -huh. on my own. This is bringing cars back and to back sell, and huh? forth. So to sell, sure. When I guess I reach up to about my 30-odd 30, 30 cars bringing from the States, I got in an accident in Mexico where I was driving a big van and he had a vehicle with two tanks. So he filled up with two tanks and my tank ran out and he were, we were in the mountains. We used you to go can't through, get gas. We never had no wheels but to go through the mountains and go over the ferry at Tampico. Um, so when my car, we went down in the morning, we left like about 5.30 in the morning. I was drizzling in the morning. This is my first time now where I get, like, second time when I get to this point where death came close to me. I went down the mountain and then going up back up now, it was an excitement. I mean, the tank was really, really an excitement. I, I was scaring. At MTE. Yes. Uh -huh. And he was far ahead of me. He was driving like. He said to keep up with him, but then I can't keep up with him with an empty tank. Uh -huh. So when I got down, I went down and I came back up to the tip of the, it was high mountains. I mean, when you look down, the semi-trucks are very, like, yes. Uh, yes, small right little now. things. Yes. You can see them. You look don't even want to look because it's so far down. So when I got up there, as I got to the top, the gas went. And when the engine closed up, that means you have no brakes, you have no steering because everything gets hard. Everything. And the beep would flip down, down the mountain, like, Eight times. When it fell to the bottom, I got to the bottom. I was, I was trying to think about, um, we'll catch fire now. Mm -hmm. So I tried to get out all the doors, and all the doors were sealed closed, so I had to kick through the windshield to get out. You did have on your seat belt, you said? Yes, I had on my seat belt, okay. and that was saving because I, this, the armrest on the side of the seat dig me in the side, and I broke like three ribs. Broke ribs. Okay. And I had a cut under there. That's all happened to me there, with all that down there. Oh, down there. Uh -huh. So I crawled up to the top and when... So, so, so you, get, you, you kick yourself out of the vehicle Some and now you're going to crawl back up. Up, up there. It was a very high... High. Because you had flipped eight times, you down figure. Down cliff, yeah. And now you have to climb up the Climb back up. Yeah, so that was close to death. So, okay, let's stop right mm. there. So this is the second time that God has spared his life, huh? yes. because that could have gone, continued on. It could have blown up yes. it's so easily. But maybe, maybe that what saved you, but there's gas. no gas, gas, there, <laughs> no yes. gas there. But other things could have caught, anything it, could have happened. A tree could have gone through there and came in through me or whatever. Yes, or even maybe you didn't put on your seatbelt and, and that could neck. have been, as, you know, broken your neck. Yeah. So, so please viewers, this is the second time God is speaking to Dennis. Dennis isn't really listening, listening, but listening. God's speaking to yes. him. So you get up there, they, you get back to Tala, and he... He came back, to, he came back and the guy was behind me. He went up there and catch him. To tell him that, that I what had happened. I had an accident, and he came back, and he cursed me up like nothing. Mm. I mean, I got it from both of them. They, mm. said, they cursed a lot of bad words, right? Oh, I could imagine. Uh, so he even asked me how, how I feel. Mm. He was worrying about his car. About the said, car, right? Oh, I wrecked the car and a whole lot of stuff. I said, well, okay, no problem. And never once took blame that he didn't pay to put gas yeah, I told in him, the vehicle. I told him, but then I didn't have no gas. And he said, well, I should ask the guy behind me. I said, but I didn't come here with him. I came with you. With you were supposed to take but care of me. But supply the gas. That's right. Uh -huh. He cursed me up and he dashed me in the back of the truck, mm -hmm. in the camper. I was in the back. He asked me if I wanted to eat. I said, no. I I was so mad, I didn't want to eat. So I didn't eat for like two days. And that's with three, so you continue the trip to Belize. And I was laying with down. With three ro broken ribs. I put my bag under my head and just lie down there. Just I was taking a pound because the road wasn't oh, nice. Oh yes, wasn't good back road. in those days, sure. 
Oh, and I wow. got to Belize. I told him, "Share." I said, "You know what? Um, I'm not going back with you." He said, "I was just going to tell you that." I said, "Well, I'm telling you now. I'm not going back with you anymore." Okay. I quit. So that relationship ended. Okay. So that's the second experience <laughs> yeah, of a near-death experience. Now let's move on. You're going to go work with um, Advance. Uh, from there, right mm -hmm. away, I moved across because um, my friend Michael, Stefan, mm -hmm. was living across from them okay. in a house. And I met him there. I knew him before, but I didn't get close to him. Mm -hmm. Until then, I started hanging out with him. And he met Miss Dana, and they got married. Mm -hmm. So he left me to take care of the house, and okay. but so, I didn't need no. But so you, you're doing several jobs with him, huh? One, yes. at, one main one, really, is, is even uh, taking his kids to school every day. That was in the beginning. Then Everything. he went to the States for like 10 years, uh -huh. and he decided to come back to Belize to open up company name Advanced Advertising. Advertising. And you work there? Yes. With, with that one, with, adverti with that Advanced Advertising. At the time, Shelly was a baby. So, was... Yeah, so, you, so basically you raised those two kids exactly. as, they were as like well. My huh? kids. They were like mm -hmm. my kids. Because from 7 in the morning, 7 at night, I warned them. Everything <laughs> they wanted, I had you, to get you it. You got it for them. It was my job to take mm -hmm. care of them. So overall, you worked there within the family or the advanced advertising for nearly how Mostly many? the kids. The kids, how many years overall with that well, whole family? Well, I did like 17 years with those kids because mm -hmm. all the way through was St. Catherine's Elementary. Uh -huh. Then he went to Belize Elementary. And after Belize Elementary, Shelley went to St. Catherine, then Christian went to St. John's. Okay, but, but overall, even with later on, it's, it's going to be more than 17 years. Yes, Nelly, I continue to on to with the, them. in the office to uh -huh. be there. So it's personal. going to be nearly like up to 30 years, you personal said. Personal driver. Okay, we're, going to, we're coming to close, but I want to get this little story in before we go to the next, uh, uh, okay. next session. One of the times you're there working there with them, of course, you tell, quickly tell us a story about going to Friendship to, in the evening to get your beer. Mm. Your, your, no, because beer, beer was some oh, food. Oh, food, okay. But, but beer was a drink that you would be drinking all the time. You said you used to have... Um, no, I never liked liquor. No, okay, liquor. but beer, you said, was you'd, you'd have what? Uh, liquor, um, li liquid lunches. Liquid lunches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what happened there at, at a friendship? Okay, I had a girlfriend that I had. She was not married yet, but then she lived with a guy. But she fell in love with me and she never left me alone. This night I went home early because I didn't want to see her. It was the same time when Belize Elementary had closed for summer. Okay. 27th of, the, um, 27th of June, 1997. I can never forget that date too. So I went home and she came and I said, I didn't want to see her. So she said, well, take me back home. I took her back. The first thing happened to me, I got a puncture. I was in rain, I fixed it. <laughs> and I took her back to her house. Then I stopped at friendship while I was drizzling. And I left the car running, and these guys came up and said, um, give them a stout. And I said, you know, why you don't look for a job? I cursed them. Cause my, I had Cursing them off, yeah. I had a dirty mouth that time. So <laughs> I told him that. And the guy said, well, one of them said, well, let me, let us mess them up, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I said it, it took me a while before I realized that these guys really want to do me something. By the time I looked back, they were all over me. They flagged me with a... Belly came by the bar in my head, I fell. You fell, once they hit you on the head. Yes, uh, and when I fell, I was knocked out. Mm -hmm. Then I really, I guess I had broken my hip then. Okay, so that's where, probably on the falling, <clears throat> huh? Yes, and the, when the, I was the, on the ground, out cold, it took a cement block that was holding the door from closing. It was a big... Big uh, cement block, yes, we all know what a cement... And uh -huh. it's cavity fill. I mean, the hole inside was filled up with cement. Oh my goodness. It was very, yeah. two times the size. I dropped it in my pill. Oh. Break up all my teeth, everything. I'm a, I had a good set of teeth, beautiful white teeth. I still have them in a little bag home. <laughs> you saved them. I never get rid of nothing. I, uh. I, you know, because that guy gave me those. So. And I never took them out to put no whatever. No, uh huh. So I ended up in a hospital like one week or two weeks after. I went back to work. Back to work again. With the uh, crutches. Okay, but let's go again. See, this is another near death. Yes. God, I mean, to drop a cement block on a face. Luckily, I guess it hit purposely just here. It didn't go all the way all over the face. It mm. could have blinded you. It could have done damage your brain. It could have so many things. But mm. it did affect you because 
Well, of course, his mouth, like you said, your, your, your jaw up. was wired and everything. Or for they, four months. For I, four months. I couldn't eat. Okay, four months he couldn't eat. Just but strong. not only that, it's his it, hip totally displaced. Huh? Yes. They had to, did they pin that in? I or four big screws like that, like so three four three inches. Four pins that. And you're still, he's left with a limp. So yes, when um, you walk, you still have this limp. Huh? Yes. That, so there you go. Uh, as we come to the end of this section, this is the third near-death experience that I see that that um, that God is still after him. Like they said, the hound of heaven. Dennis, you need to do how much more times do I have to tell you, show you before you turn back to me? Well, we'll see in the next um, our next section where Dennis is going to finally listen to what God has to say to him. Uh, started drinking beer on Saturday nights, uh, sleeping in on Sunday mornings, missing mass, and it just became a pattern and continued. Without God, I don't know where I'd be right now. I feel like I'm whole again. I know the importance of the Eucharist. I know the importance of the sacraments that I didn't know at a young age. I follow God's will because my desire is to get to heaven. Our, our lives are rich and full by being members of the church. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, visit catholicscomehome.org. Okay, we're back, and we're going to continue on Dennis's story. So like I said, I've, we've gone through three of, as far as I'm concerned, his near-death experiences. They're, probably all three of them would have killed me by now. But we're going to go on now, and mm. he's, um, he's, recovery, uh, he's re recovering from that. He has face wired up, uh, totally d dislocated hip that has affected him up to this day, and um, teeth that... Uh, I, mean, I still, have, them. still have some of your teeth. Okay. Yeah. So with this now, and I've, during this whole interview, I asked him, you know, where is God in your life? He's there somewhere. I mean, there's no question about it. Remember now, we've been, he's been baptized, received communion, confirmation. So we don't understand that when we get those sacraments, God is in there somewhere. All of us that have been baptized, right, right. any Christian, right, right. it's there. Yes. It's just like we say with the Holy Spirit, we have to stir him and bring him back aflame once again. But Dennis hasn't decided to do that just quite yet. He's done a few little things. He told me while, while driving, he had a little booklet of St. Jude. Yes. So when you had the car accident, you shouted out to St. Jude yes. to ask for St. Jude's help. Yes. Yeah. I had a request part where you said request you right. uh, make your make your request make your request and he is a and of the impossible. And my one was take me safely home. Okay, I and said and he's two thousand miles you have to drive yes. in two days. Take you safely home. It's a drive hard like eighteen, nineteen miles an hour. So do you home. realize Saint Jude answered your prayer? And he was. I uh, was. You had home. three broken ribs and yes. a cut on your chin, but he still brought Saved you safely home. Yes. And Saint Jude, we know, is it's the saint of the impossible. Impossible. So yes. he did that. Okay, so with all of that now, finally, Dennis is going to have a turning point. But let's see what it's going to take to, for Dennis to have this turning point. So let's go ahead now. Um, of course, you're working still with the Esther fans and doing all your jobs and everything. Yes. But one night at home, you have a terrible experience. Yes, I, um, I couldn't go to the bathroom for like about four days. Mm -hmm. I was... Drinking, because I had the pain in my hip, uh -huh. I used to drink ibuprofen, I mean 500 milligrams. Oh, yes. So I drink it in the morning, early before I go to work, mm -hmm. not knowing you have to eat with it. Yes, always. So I didn't eat. Mm -hmm. I normally mostly used to drink, so. <laughs> in the afternoon, around 1 o'clock, I started drinking like two beers, liquid lunch. Mm -hmm. And I go from there until night, drink every hour, I drink two, two, two. My goodness. Then this time I couldn't go to the bathroom for like four days, so I, I went to the drugstore, got some Dalcolax, and I drank like two. So the night I went home, and I felt my belly bubbling, I said, well, well I could go now, because you could feel it's ready to go, right? And when I went there, the sun had thrown, and I, I went out, but I was glad that I could go. Mm -hmm. 
So when I got up and I looked back, I said, wow, you know, it was blood, mm-hmm. no stool, just blood. So I hurry, clean it up and I flush. So I went back in the bed, I said, well, tomorrow I'm going to go to, it was a Friday night. Mm-hmm. I said, tomorrow I'm going to go to the doctor and see what's about. So by the time I get back, I went again. It was the same thing, and more blood, but blood, blood. I flushed that again, and I went again, like about three or four more times. And I realized this is too much. And I got up, I see the whole place was turning dark, and I fell in the shower. I was knocked out. And I felt my spirit left, leaving me, and I looked up in the sky, and I saw the spirit just leaving and leaving, and I was going into space. I couldn't feel nothing. It was just my mind was in a big trance. Eh? This was just leaving me. Everything was just leaving me. And the only thing came into my mind was, oh, Jesus, help me. An instant, a spirit came right back to me. Oh, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. And that. He was there with you all along. Mm-hmm. Came right back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then. And I felt that I, I could have got up and I walked from the toilet and my toilet is all the way in the back. I have three rooms, one, two, three. The toilet is in the back. And I walked from there to the front door and I wonder what I was going to do now because I'm serious problem. Mm-hmm. Then I went outside, opened the door and I went outside. I was in just brief. And a fresh puff of air came. I didn't know where it came. It was a cold, fresh. Freshest breeze I ever felt in my life mm-hmm. came over me and just brought me back more to life. I, just, I feel a good spirit there, you know. I said, wow. So I said, what am I going to do? So I had a first time with cell phone, so I called Mike. and said, Mike, please come for me right now. I'm dying. And he said, okay, you come right now. And in two minutes, I don't know how he did it so fast, but he was there for you. He came there within three minutes. Mm-hmm. He was there at Travelers and came to me. And I already got under the shower, I took a shower, and the whole place was messed up. So I told him, watch where you are, because the place was all messed up. Full of blood, eh? Everywhere. Blood. He took me to help care partner, I mean, help partners care, whatever. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And they took me there, and the doctor examined me, everything, he gave me colonoscopy, endoscopy, and all. He told me that they had them. So the ulcers in my intestines, mm-hmm. it was bleeding, all the time it was bleeding. So he gave me some medication so I could mm-hmm. flush it out and clean it up into another one, another colonoscopy. But you also had to get blood, didn't you? Yes, I was so weak. Wait, uh-huh. I, I was weak. Then they gave me like three units of blood, brought me back a little bit. Then I had to drink a lot of tonic and stuff. Then I still didn't feel too well, but then I had to stay home for a week or so or two. Mm-hmm. Then I went back to work because I didn't want to stay home by myself. I lived by myself all uh-huh. my life. I went back to work and then gradually I got back. And after four months with all the medication and stuff, I just say, well, this is the time now I need to go and face Jesus. Mm-hmm. And my birthday was coming up and it was on a Sunday before the time. In the month of December, is that huh? December 28th. I passed Christmas and December 28th was my birthday. And I say I'm going to change my life for the rest of my life on this day. And then I came to Divine Mercy here, mm-hmm. where I started out. And then I was Father Blunt. Mm-hmm. And he used to preach some good sermons and he used to teach me that you need Jesus in your life. And Jesus will never leave you and never forsake you. And so and I said, no, this is what I, what I needed in my life. Mm-hmm. So then I decided to go and made a confession and everything. And Father Blood told me, say, you are a leader. And you need to step up to the plate and serve God. He told me that you need to give up all the wrong things in life and turn your life to Jesus and you will see the difference. And I decided to do that. And from then on, I never missed church on and Sunday. You stopped your drinking? I had stopped drink from then on up till now. I tried a couple of times and every time I take a, one beer and it hurt me, I get sick for three days. 
So I realized I don't need any more liquor in my life. Mm-hmm. I tried cigarette, the same thing, it just to me, it makes me sick. So I realized those things, I see some people go to rehab mm-hmm. to get over these just things. Thing. But it's you not, didn't it's need not that. rehab. Mm-hmm. It's your own mind. It's right. It's, it's God but, can do it. Yeah, you, you make up your mind and I decided that God will take care of me from now on. And women, the same thing. Mm-hmm. You kept away from... Yes, I had a lot of bad company and I decided mm-hmm. to keep away from them. And Move away from temptation. Because the, the company that I had, everybody used to drink and smoke and do yeah, everything. Everything, yes. So when I kept away from them, I kept myself to myself. Mm-hmm. I went to church. During the week, I started okay, every day. Mm-hmm. And that made me feel, I get humble. Yes. Humble, humble, humble. I didn't have no job then because I had really stopped working at uh-huh. advance. That you need. Because you also too, you needed some healing, physical yes. healing then now. Mike, Mike from, told me, he said, you don't have to work with the company, you can work with me mm-hmm. as his personal, personal driver. Okay. And, then, uh, and that's why I stayed with him and he took care of me. Without him, I don't know where I would have been. Okay. Well, so, he's my best friend for life. Sure, sure. Let's look, you had given me, usually I ask them for a Bible verse. And, um, Dennis had given me from Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 4, verse 29 to 31. And I think this is powerful for what happened to Dennis here. It says, But you will also begin again to search for Jehovah your God, and you will find him when you search for him with all your heart and soul. When those bitter days have come upon you in the latter days, yes. so here in his older, in a, a, being an, at a, at a yes. uh, later life in life, you will finally return to the Lord your God yes. and listen to what he tells you. For the Lord your God is merciful. Oh, that's so that's it. And I liked another one I had pulled up. I saw this one on EWTM. You know these little quotes you see from the different saints? Yes. And I love this one. It says, to reach something good, it is very useful to have gone astray and thus acquire experience. Yes, so right. you had a lot of experience. Yeah, like and that's from St. Teresa I tell you one of more Avila. Thing before uh-huh. you go. Sure, let's go ahead. Mm-hmm. I, was, I went to Chicago in 1983, and I stayed there for like about a couple of months, almost nine months. But I was suffering over there. I, had, I couldn't go to church because I went there so I could go to the St. Jude shrine up there. Oh, okay. But it was so far away from me and I had nobody to take to me take there. Uh-huh. And I was going astray again right there. Okay. I was drinking, smoking, going everywhere, parties, parties. And I decided I wanted to come back home, but I didn't have the money to come home. Then Mike and Donna was living in New Orleans. And I saved up $75 and I wanted to come back home. So I decided I'm, I am going to go to Mike. I'm asking for help. So money could take the bus to... I only know. had 75. That's uh-huh. all it costs to come from, Belize, I mean from Chicago to New to Orleans. New Orleans. Mm-hmm. 24 hour ship. Mm-hmm. And when I got to New Orleans, I was at Slider coming across the bridge to New Orleans. When I passed the Superdome, this is one I know. It's like a needle in a haystack. Where when I looked out the window, I saw Mike and Donna and Pierre and Mike Bonera coming from the game. Oh my goodness. I was in the bus. I did, they didn't know I was coming and I didn't know I was going to see them. And out the blues, I saw them and I opened the bus window. Not supposed to open it. And I had a, Mike, Mike, you know. Mm-hmm. And when he looked up, he had a sense win. What I did, he said, no, it's Disho. I took out my hat and my uh-huh. glasses and I showed him my face. He said, it's Disho. And they realized it was me. Uh-huh. And they went behind the bus and met me at the bus stop. Uh-huh. So imagine, you know. For that to, yes. What are the chances of you in a bus and them coming out of, with thousands, of thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming out of a game? In a big country like the United States, States, you know? To, to be able to show God's how God hand, was God's there with me. Okay, so let's continue now on, on this conversion of yours. So you've, you're, you're back to church now. Father Jeff, you said, was also after Father Scott. Father Jeff, Jeff came in, came Father to Divine Arturo Mercy. Too. So he also was instrumental. Father Arturo and Father Francis. Father Arturo, as, as each set of priests came, yes. they all helped with your, yes. this, this slow conversion. It's not going to be, I mean, it's... No, no it's not overnight. No, thing. it's definitely it's not overnight. And we have, we fall and we get up, yes. like you said. You fell, but you get up again. Yeah. And so um, your life today now, you're going to Mass? 
Well, I was working again and yes. I was missing church a lot and I felt I was getting back um, angry. Mm -hmm. Anger was coming back to my life and I was feeling I, this is what I didn't want, you know. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was working I had to tell the boss, well, you know, but we had a quarrel and stuff. And I told her, you know, I need, um, I can't go no more because I had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. It's either God or Mama. And I had to make a choice. If it's this, it's this. If it's that, it's that. So I choose God. Because I say, with God, nothing can go wrong. With God, my life, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. So I choose Him because I know before this job here, I was living just in church, but I had everything. I paid my bills, I paid everything. But I wasn't worrying about the things. I mean, I put myself in a the poor, poorer class of people that have nothing to eat and no money to pay the bills, but God decided, that, no, He don't want that for me. So He supported me with everything so I could pay my bills and do things. Mm -hmm. And I tip in my mind all the time. It's more blessing to give than to receive, mm -hmm. because people have a lot, but they don't want to give, you know. So it's more blessing to give than to receive, and that's the motto I keep. I like okay. to give. And you say you say a rosary. I, I know I see you at mass, see, I see uh, different rosary. things. Well, you but um, you also said, which you gave me one. Yes. He also got hold of one of these. Someone gave this one to Mr. you, Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, um, Nicholas. Justin Nicholas. Nicholas, yes. And that was when you when you're doing your you used to come to Bible that, sharing. That, that book right there made a big difference in my life. Big difference in your life. Yes. But since then, what do you do with this book? Well, I don't know where to sell them, so I buy them and I give it out to my people. So you know? he evangelizes by by purchasing these books and giving them out to others. Yes, to help and them. And they're wonderful. God's promises to you, and it it, it picks up on. Whatever, um, you know, if God's inexhaustible strength, his f faithfulness, peace, salvation, forgiveness, guiding presence, generous provision, unfailing love, anxious, lonely, depressed, injured, impatient, angry, or vengeful, because yes. you said you had to work on and your anger. anger. So there you go. This mm, is. I gave one to those girls from Brodies, and you, they, I told them, don't let anybody hold it because you will lose it. And I gave it to them on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I went, no, it was Friday. Uh -huh. And I went there yesterday and I said, please have it. Mm -hmm. And somebody took it. Take it already. Yep. <laughs> You're going to have to get another I one. I gave one to Miss K. And that, uh, she used to use it on the radio station. On the radio station. And Miss Wanda used it Miss, now. Uh -huh. You gave one to and one, one as well. <laughs> So I have, and now I have mine. He's given me one also. Yes. All right, we're winding up. And I'll still go back to one of, we, he spoke about it earlier, but I'll go back to it also. He gave me um, Ephesians 6, uh, 10 to 12. He says, last of all, I want to remind you that your strength must come from the Lord's mighty power within you. And this is when it continues on. Put on all of God's armor. Mm. And I brought this here with me. Put on all of God's, do me a favor, hold that up for me, please, while I, while I read. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand safe against all strategies and tricks of Satan. For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against people without bodies, the evil ru rulers of the unseen world and against huge numbers of wicked spirits in the spirit world. Yes. So that's what we're fighting, not only of the flesh, but of the evil one. And like he mentioned it, you know, you learned it with the armor of God when you yes. were with the Mennonites, and we yes. teach it right there at our schools, because I use it as well. But please look at the armor we put on, huh? and it's, it's the belt, the belt of truth, and it's the, the vest, uh, the breastplate it's of best, righteousness, righteousness. We put on the boots of peace, the shield. Um, it says most important is the shield of faith yes. in front of you to put out the fiery arrows of the devil. That's right. And every day, every day, in our temptations that. are the fiery oh, yeah. arrows. So that, that we have to have faith to be able to cover ourselves every day That's against right. the temptations. Then we have the helmet of salvation. And last of all, which we can't do without, the sword 
of truth, that which is the Bible. That's right. We have to know the Word of God yeah, right. to be able to put on this so you whole have to arm. study your Bible every Bible day. Bible every day. So, okay, so we've come to the end. Now we're closing up, and we, different things you do. We see that you have totally changed your life. You're going to Mass, praying. Um, you up. have your I daughter is still around, and you have uh, three, three grandchildren. Four. Four. Four grandchildren. Two boys, two girls. Okay, four grandchildren. And um, you said you also, and we agreed, you certainly have a grandmother up in heaven Amen. who Around. has been, been with you through my it mother all. Was a, my mother was a saint as well. Your she, mother as well. She worked hard. She took care of a lot of kids. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Their mom went to state and left them with her. Uh -huh. And she worked hard to take care to of them To take as care well. of all of that. So, so walking saints that nobody even recognizes yes, yes, at that yes, time. Yes, yes. Okay, we have a. a we, he also came, came up with this poem. I don't, with, with your eyes, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it, but we could read it. it it's it's a poem, and if, I know some of you have heard it, but let's go again because we have to understand humility when we when we you know people look at us and say, oh well, you've gone churchy on us and you've done that. No, it's just that we have, we have been through all these other experiences and realized and come to understand through putting on our own armor yes. that God is there for us. Yes. So we'll um, read this together. It says, um, that's, you've heard it. Tell us, start. When I, when I say, say I am a Christian, Christian I'm, I'm not shouting, shouting. I've been, been saved. saved. I'm I whispering, I get lost, lost sometimes. sometimes. That's, that's why I, I chose this way. way. When, when I, I say I'm I am a Christian, Christian I, don't I don't speak with, with human pride. pride. I'm, I'm confessing that I stumble, needing God to be my guide. My guide. When, when I, I say I am a Christian, Christian I'm, I'm not trying, trying to be strong. strong. I'm professing that I am weak, weak and pray for strength to carry on. on. When, when I say I am a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting that I failed and cannot ever pay the debt. When I say I am a Christian, I don't think I know it all. I submit to my confusion, asking humbly to be taught. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible. My God believes I am worth it. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartaches. That is why I seek Jesus' name. Okay, we'll leave that. All right. So, Dennis, I think all of us who have heard this can relate to this. We're not trying to shout it out. We want to shout it out. Yes. But we have to do it with humility. Yes. And Dennis, you're a perfect example of that humility, right. of coming back into your faith again. Yes, it's hard, but uh, you have to continue trying. Continue fight. daily. Uh, That's fight. why we need, we, we need that armor, the breastplate to yes, fight daily. Viewers, we've come to the end now. So once again, I'd like to thank Dennis for being thank here and welcome. sharing his testimony with us. And of course, you, the viewers, for being there, watching us and watching the show. I thank also our cameramen, Mark and Lewis, and I like to give Tom Peterson a little plug, thanking him for his evangel commercials, and also you can see his show on <coughs> EWTN, Catholics Come Home. So, we'll see you next time. God bless you. God loves you. <laughs>